Hello students, today we shall see eigenvalue and eigenvector of a square matrix. Then we shall see Kelly Hamilton theorem and its application in finding inverse of a non singular square matrix. So, what is eigenvalue and eigenvector of a square matrix? Let capital A be a square matrix of order n. Then a scalar lambda is called an eigenvalue of capital A if there exists a non-zero column vector. Important is non-zero column vector capital X equal to x1, x2, dot, 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 xn with n components such that ax equal to lambda x. ax is equal to lambda x means multiplication of x by a is equivalent to multiplication of x by scalar lambda is equal rather ax equal to lambda x. And in this case, this non-zero vector capital X is called an eigenvector of A corresponding to the eigenvalue lambda with respect to the eigenvalue lambda or sometimes it can relative to the eigenvalue lambda. So, if AX equal to lambda X where capital X is a non-zero column vector, then lambda is an eigenvalue and capital X is an eigenvector. Now, how to calculate eigenvalues, this theorem will tell us. Lambda is an eigenvalue of a square matrix capital A if and only if determinant of A minus lambda i is equal to 0. That is, lambda is the root of this equation. So, proof. Let us see the proof. Lambda is an eigenvalue of a square matrix capital A implies an implied by. That is, if and only if necessary and sufficient condition. Ax equal to lambda x. This is the definition for some non-zero column vector capital X equal to this x on x to dot dot x n implies and implied by ax minus lambda x equal to o o means here zero vector null vector o equal to 0 0 0 n times having n components n cross 1 matrix here it is it is a column vector all components are zero so ax minus lambda x equal to o implies and implied by ax minus lambda ix equal to o Capital X can be written as Ix. What is I? I is the unit matrix of order and if we multiply X, pre-multiply X by I, it will remain as X. Now, take matrix multiplication is distributive. So, we take capital X common from the right. So, it is A minus lambda I X equal to O, where capital X is not equal to O means not equal to 0 vector. And this implies and implied by A minus lambda I is not invertible, not invertible otherwise suppose a minus lambda is invertible then what will happen a minus lambda is a matrix and cross and matrix if it is invertible what will happen from this line from this line we shall get x equal to a minus lambda inverse into o means this zero vector equal to zero zero vector o capital o is zero vector here which is a contradiction because capital x is not zero so that's why a minus lambda is not invertible not invertible means it is singular determinant is zero so determinant of a minus lambda I equal to zero this is zero real number zero so the result is theorem is proved lambda is an eigenvalue if and only if determinant of a minus lambda I equal to zero thus eigenvalues of a are roots of the equation determinant of a minus lambda I equal to zero and eigenvectors are non-zero solution vectors non-zero solution vectors of the system or non-zero solutions of the system of equations a x a minus lambda i x equal to o from this line a minus lambda i x equal to o non-zero solutions eigenvectors so from this theorem we know how to calculate eigenvalues and eigenvectors some definitions let capital a be a square matrix of order n then a minus lambda i i is unit matrix of order n a minus lambda i is called the characteristic matrix of a where i is the unit matrix of order n and lambda i is scalar indeterminate there is a scalar variable unknown scalar unknown so a minus lambda is called characteristic matrix of a and determinant of a minus lambda i is called characteristic function of a and when expanded it becomes a polynomial in lambda of degree n and is called the characteristic polynomial of a determinant of a minus lambda is called characteristic polynomial of a the equation determinant of a minus lambda I equal to 0 polynomial equal to 0 is called the characteristic equation of a and the roots of this equation are called 
the characteristic roots or latent roots of capital A and a non-zero column vector capital X with n components x1, x2, dot xn satisfying ax equal to lambda x or a minus lambda i x equal to o. Already you have seen in the previous result a x equal to lambda x equivalent to a minus lambda i x equal to o. And this non-zero solution vector is called characteristic vector of a corresponding to lambda. Corresponding to the characteristic value lambda. But already we have seen determinant of a minus lambda equal to 0 solving we get again values also. Therefore, from the previous theorem it follows that characteristic roots are same as eigenvalues. Means and so that characteristic vectors are same as eigenvectors. Example number one. Let us see some examples. Find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of the following matrices. Three matrices given 2 by 2, 3 by 3. Second one is homework. Let us do first one and third one. First one is let capital A be the given matrix 1, 3, 4, 5. Okay. Eigenvalues of A are roots of the equation determinant of a minus lambda I equal to 0. Already we have seen. So, determinant of a minus lambda is this. How we have seen here a minus lambda i. This is a, this is minus lambda i. I means unit matrix of order 2. Now, you lambda goes inside. This is lambda lambda diagonally. So, subtracting we get 1 minus lambda 3, 4, 5 minus lambda. So, it is easy to say that a minus lambda is obtained just by subtracting lambda from the principal diagonal of a. 1 minus lambda, 5 minus lambda. So, directly we have written here. In future also, we shall write directly. a minus lambda i means just subtract lambda from the diagonal of a. Get it. So, determinant of a minus lambda is 0. Now, we expand this determinant, this into that, minus 3 into 4, 12. So, multiplying we get lambda square minus 5 lambda, 1 lambda, that is 6 lambda. Uh, plus 5 minus 12, so minus 7, 0. So, factorizing we get lambda plus 1, lambda minus 7 equals 0. So, lambda equal to 1 and minus 7 are the roots of this equation and which are the eigenvalues of capital A or you can say characteristic roots of capital A. Now, we have to find eigenvectors or characteristic vectors. Eigenvectors are non-zero solution vectors of this equation. A minus lambda I x equal to O system of equation. So, A minus lambda I already we have seen here. 1 minus lambda 3, 4, 5 minus lambda. So, written capital X means this variable vector x, y. Let us use the symbol x and y. And O means 0 vector here, 0, 0. Now, when lambda equal to minus 1, this system number 1 becomes. Just put lambda equal to minus 1. So, 2 and 6 will be coming here. Now, apply elementary row operation. Second row minus 2 times first row. So, that coefficient matrix becomes in echelon form. Rank is 1, number of variables 2, so 2 minus 1 means 1, there will be only 1 Li solution. So, this system reduces to 2x plus 3y equal to 0. From 2 equations, we have got 1 equation. And 1 equation, 2 variables means there will be infinite number of variables, but there is only 1 linearly independent solution. So, clearly x equal to 3 and y equal to minus 3, if I put, is a non-zero solution. Therefore, this is, this is our Li solution, non-zero solution is Li. Therefore, eigenvector corresponding to the eigenvalue lambda equal to minus 1 is capital X1 equal to the vector 3 and minus 2. Okay. Now, when lambda equal to 7, number 1 becomes. Here, if we put lambda equal to 7, it will be minus 6, it will be minus 2. So, minus 6, 3 and 4, minus 2. Now, again, we apply elementary row operation to make it convert this coefficient matrix to a column form. R2 plus 2 by 3 R1. 2 by 3 R1 will give us minus 4 plus 4 0 and in, in, incidentally this is also 0 here. So, coefficient matrix is in echelon form with 1 non 0 row means rank is 1. So, there will be 2 minus 1 and minus R means 2 minus 1 that is only 1 Li solution or 1 non 0 solution. Although this system has infinitely many solutions but linearly independent will be only 1. So, this system reduces to minus 6x plus 3y equal to 0 or minus 2x plus y equal to 0. One equation, two variable, infinite number of solution, but only one Li solution. So, if I take x equal to 1 and y equal to 2, we get 0. So, this is a non-zero solution and therefore eigenvector corresponding to lambda equal to 7 is x2 equal to 1, 2. Vector con consisting of 1, 2. So, you have got eigenvalues and eigenvector easier because of 2 by 2 matrix. Now, this is 1, 3, let us see 3 by 3 matrix. Capital A is this matrix. Determinant of a minus lambda I equal to 0. Let us calculate. The roots of this equation will be the eigenvalues. So, a minus lambda I means from diagonal just subtract lambda. So, 1 minus lambda, minus 2 minus lambda, 6 minus lambda. Other things remaining same. If we expand this determinant, we get 
1 minus lambda into this into that this into that what we have done we have written minus if we take common it will be lambda plus 2 if we take here minus common it will be lambda minus 6 so lambda plus 2 into lambda minus 6 minus minus 3 into 4 so plus 12 then if we go towards raw min, minus 1 is there so plus 1 will be coming minus minus 1 so plus 1 into through into 6 minus lambda minus 3 into 4 okay plus 2 into 2 into minus 3 means minus 6 minus 3 into that this is minus and taken common so plus will be coming here plus 6 plus 6 3 lambda okay so simplifying we have got this lambda square bracket 5 minus lambda 0 you will see the simplification later so lambda square means lambda uh, 2 values 2 equal to 0 0 and 5 minus lambda 0 means lambda will be 5 so lambda values are 0 0 5 cubic equation 3 roots therefore eigen values of a are 0 and 5 you can say 0 and, 0 and 5 are the eigen values although this 0 is repeated twice now to find eigen vectors we consider this system a minus lambda a x equal to o so a minus lambda is already there just capital x x y z we have written three variables o means this zero vector now when lambda equal to zero if we put zero here this system one becomes as it is it is a and now we shall convert this matrix coefficient matrix to echelon form so r2 change to r2 minus 2 r1 and r3 change to r3 minus 3 r1 will convert it to echelon form r3 minus 3 r1 so in, in one step we have got this form so the coefficient matrix is in echelon form and rank and has rank 1 because only one non-zero row so rank is 1 so the system has n minus r when a homogeneous system coefficient matrix is of rank r then it has n minus r linearly independent solutions here n means number of variables is 3 and r is rank is 1 so 3 minus 1 means 2 so two numbers of li solutions although the system will have infinite number of solutions but two numbers of solutions are li solutions we need them they will be the eigenvectors therefore the system to reduces to just one equation this system to you have named reduces to one equation x minus y because one minus one two so x minus y plus two z equal to zero one equation three variables so we want two linearly independent solutions let us take x equal to one y equal to one z equal to zero by trial and error method one one zero so this is a non-zero solution and if i take x zero y two z one then also you get another solution and these two solutions are linearly independent obviously because this solution is not a scalar multiple of this solution because here x is zero here x is one okay so therefore eigenvectors corresponding to eigenvalue lambda equal to zero r there are two eigenvectors we have got so first one is one one zero and second one is zero two one x y z zero two one okay so two eigenvectors you have got for the uh, corresponding to the eigenvalue lambda equal to zero now we shall see for lambda equal to five when lambda equal to five system one becomes if we put here lambda equal to five it will be minus four minus seven one diagonal minus four minus seven one other things remaining same now we want to convert this coefficient matrix to echelon form so to bring one in the first position one or minus one we do r1 plus r3 r1 change to r1 plus r3 first row change to first row plus third row so that it becomes minus one so minus one minus four and three now we make these two elements zero with the help of this minus one so r2 change to means second row change to second row plus two times first row third row change to third row plus three times first row so you get this matrix now this it is not in echelon form so if i subtract r r r, r2 from r3 then you get this to zero means echelon form will be coming so r3 change to r3 minus r2 third row change to third row minus second row we get this so this coefficient matrix is now in echelon form and its rank is 2 r equal to 2 here 2 rows are non-zero therefore the system will have n minus r 3 minus 2 equal to 1 means only one li solution only one eigen vector we shall get here the system reduces to or the reduced system is yes minus 1 minus 4 3 means minus x minus 4 y plus 3 z equal to 0 and second one is 0 x minus 15 y minus 15 y plus 10 z equal to 0 or this can be written as dividing by minus it will be 3 y minus 2 z equal to 0 so 4 and 5 we have named these two equations and by trial and error method easy to find the solution if i take y equal to 2 z equal to 3 then this equation number 5 is satisfied y equal to 2 z equal to 3 easier values and then putting this value of y2 and z3 here in number 4 we get x equal to 1 minus 8 
and it will be 9 so minus x plus 9 is plus 1 so minus x plus 1 is 0 means x equal to 1 therefore x equal to 1 y equal to 2 z equal to 3 is a non-zero solution therefore eigenvector corresponding to the eigenvalue lambda equal to 5 is x3 we have named 1 2 3 so we have found eigenvalues eigenvectors and row 1 2 left as an exercise eigenvalues will be 1 and 2 of course 1 will be repeated twice you will see 1 1 and 2 and answers given eigenvector corresponding to lambda equal to 1 is 1 2 minus 1 and that corresponding to lambda equal to 2 is 1 0 0 1 you will see now let us see Kelly Hamilton theorem what is that statement is every square matrix satisfies its own characteristic equation every square matrix satisfies its own characteristic equation or another way you can say every square matrix is a root of its characteristic equation or another way it can be uh, said every square matrix is a zero of its characteristic polynomial zero of a polynomial means root of the corresponding polynomial equation so let us see the proof in short let capital a be a square matrix of order n the characteristic polynomial of a is let us name it phi lambda phi lambda equal to determinant of a minus lambda i this is the definition characteristic polynomial and when expanded it becomes a polynomial in lambda of degree n so let us write this polynomial as a zero plus a1 into lambda plus a2 into lambda square plus dot 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 an into lambda to the power n say this a0 and a2 an will be constants the characteristic equation of a is phi lambda equal to 0 means this polynomial equal to 0 characteristic equation and we have to verify we have to prove rather to prove what this equation is satisfied by capital a means replacing lambda by capital a so and this is <coughs> another fact here is that we have written phi a equal to when we replace lambda by a this a naught a naught into capital i is to be written otherwise uh, in all other places lambda is replaced by a, a a square a to the power n is there but a naught into capital i where i is the unit matrix of order n otherwise a naught plus a one into capital a and uh, scalar plus matrix is not possible means undefined that's why to make the value of the polynomial expression meaningful this a naught into i this is the definition value of a polynomial uh, when you replace the variable by a matrix you have to replace the uh, constant term with constant term into unit matrix okay so a naught i plus a1 a plus a2 square dot 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 plus a n a to the power n equal to o o means a null matrix null square null matrix of order n we have to verify we have to prove this so we know a minus lambda i into adjoint a minus lambda i equal to determinant of a minus lambda i into i. This is a standard result with adjoint matrix into adjoint matrix is equal to determinant of the matrix into unit matrix. Standard result, you know it. Now, putting the value of determinant of a minus lambda i from number uh, this uh, portion uh, uh, that is characteristic uh, polynomial we have substituted here into i number two. Now. We have to calculate adjoint a minus lambda i. The elements of adjoint a minus lambda i, adjoint matrix, adjugate matrix, adjoint a minus lambda i are the cofactors of the elements of the determinant, determinant a minus lambda i. This is the definition. Elements of adjoint of a minus lambda i are the cofactors of the elements of the determinant, determinant of a minus lambda i. Elements are cofactors. Of course, we shall take the transpose also uh, while uh, <coughs> writing the adjoint. Okay, and so they are polynomials in lambda of degree uh, at most n minus one. At most n minus because it's n cross n determinant will be there, and so uh, every cofactor will be uh, with omitting one row and one column, we will get a <coughs> polynomial of at most degree n minus one. We shall see. You can see here in this page suppose a minus lambda is this a is a 3 by 3 matrix a minus lambda is this and then cofactors of 1 minus lambda omitting this line this line this remains so this into that means lambda minus 4 and lambda plus 1 we have written just minus will be taken common minus 7 into minus 1 plus 7 so this is the cofactor of 1 minus lambda similarly cofactor of 2 cofactor of 3 calculated then cofactor of 0 cofactor of uh, uh, this 0 will be with a starting with a minus sign because it is uh, second row first column with a minus sign so cofactor of this 0 will be minus 2 in 2 into minus 1 minus 1 minus 3 into 7 okay so calculated similarly cofactor of 2 will be with minus sign 
this line, this line, omitted, 0 into that minus 5 into minus 1 means plus 5. So, 5. Similarly, all other cofactors we have calculated. And matrix of cofactors of a minus lambda i is all the cofactors you have written. Matrix of cofactors of a minus lambda i. This is not adjoint. This is the matrix of cofactors of a minus lambda i is. Just cofactors we have substituted. This uh, first three cofactors are of first row. Then second three are cofactors of second row. Third, uh, last three are cofactors of third row. We have substituted. Now, this every ex, uh, every element here uh, do not contain lambda square or lambda. So, we have written with 0 lambda square, 0 lambda. This 5 we have written 0 lambda square, 0 lambda plus 5, etc. Similarly, lambda square and lambda introduced in every expression. We can introduce. Now, every element is a sum of three elements. So, this matrix can be written as the sum of three matrices. Sum of three matrices. Okay. So, take lambda square coefficients 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. We have written lambda square common. Then take lambda common, it will be minus 3, 0, 5, minus 3, 0, 5. Lambda common here 2, 0, 7, 2, 0, 7. Here 3, minus 1, minus 5. And then constant term 3, 5, 20, minus 20, 23, minus 16, 3, minus 14, 1, 4, etc. So, what do you see? Lambda square into one matrix, 3 by 3. Lambda into another matrix, 3 by 3. Lambda, and constant term without lambda, this is also a 3 by 3 matrix. So, we can name it, this is B0, this is B0, this is B1, this is B2, we can write. So, it is ultimately, we can write B0 plus B1 lambda plus B2 lambda square. Although it is not adjoint, it is matrix of cofactors of MNS lambda i. If we want to write uh, adjoint, then it will be transpose only. The elements will be changed. Transpose we shall take. B0, B1, B2 will be changed. Just transpose will be coming. But uh, the this expression can be written as matrix polynomial. Of degree what 2, originally we have taken MNS lambda is a, a, a is a 3 by 3 matrix. And this uh, uh, matrix of cofactors becomes a polynomial of degree 2. So, if we take adjoint also means uh, transpose of this uh, matrices, then also it will be similar expression. So, that is written here. We have seen for a 3 by 3 matrix. Adjoint minus lambda will be B0 plus B1 lambda plus B2 lambda square plus dot 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 Bn minus 1 lambda to the power n minus 1. It is a matrix polynomial of degree n minus 1. Okay, where B0, B1, B2 dot dot Bn minus are all matrices, square matrices of order n. Now, from 2 and 3, this is adjoint minus lambda i and the, uh, let us put this value here in number 2. So, we get minus lambda i into this matrix polynomial is equal to this polynomial lambda i into capital I unit matrix, which is an identity. So, we can equate coefficients of like powers of lambda from both sides and then we get what? Equating coefficients of like powers of lambda, we get we get come here from this line we come here okay here without lambda term is a into b0 here without lambda term is a0 into i see a into b0 equal to a0 into i then with lambda what we get a into b1 coefficient of lambda and there is also minus lambda i into b0 means i into b0 is b0 i is unit matrix so it will be uh, a b1 minus b0 see a b1 minus b0 and here is a1 i coefficient of lambda then lambda square if we search a into b2 and this minus lambda i into b1 lambda will give us lambda square i into b1 is b1 so a b2 minus b1 equal to a2 i here a2 i lambda square coefficient similarly a b2 minus b1 is a, uh, a b3 minus b2 is a3 i dot 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 etc it will continue finally a b n minus 1 minus b n minus will be a n minus 1 i that is coefficient of lambda to the n minus 1 and finally coefficient of lambda to the power n there is only one term lambda i into b n minus 1 into lambda to the power n minus 1 when you multiply i into b n minus 1 is b n minus 1 and uh, lambda into that will be lambda to the power n so only one term minus b n minus 1 and right side coefficient of lambda to the power n is a n into i so, these are the equalities we have got. Now, multiplying the equalities in number 4 by i a a square a cube dot 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 a n means first one by i, first one by i, second one by a. Let us multi pre multiply. Better we use the word pre multiplying. Multiplying means pre multiplying. We can use here word pre multiplying. 
3 multiplying the equality sign over by this i into a will be a and i into i here a uh, degree n0 is scalar, scalar no problem uh, a not will be first i into i i square so we shall get a b not equal to n not i same but if i multiply this second one by a it will be a square b1 minus a b not plus a1 a because i into a is a now when it will be multiplied by a and added this a b not and this a b not will be cancelled here a will be coming if we multiply here a square will be coming so when added this two will be cancelled here a will be coming okay if i multiply by a square it will be a cube here a square will be coming if we multiply by a square and here it will become a square okay so if we add you see uh, and a b not a b not cancel this a square b on this a square b will be cancelled similarly everything will be cancelled if we add left side everything will be cancelled and right side it will be c here n not i a 1 s plus a 2 s square etc and it will be n will be coming okay so o equal to adding matrices we get everything else everything cancel means null matrix we will get o so n not i plus a 1 a plus a 2 s square plus dot 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 and it will be n equal to o we have got means this is Kelly-Hamilton theorem this this equation this equation was characteristic equation a not a 1 lambda a 2 lambda square dot, dot, dot plus a n 8 lambda to the power n equal to 0 and replace capital a lambda by capital a and a not by a not into i we get capital O. so this square matrix capital a satisfies its characteristic equation so Kelly-Hamilton theorem is proved okay now Inverse of a non singular square matrix using Kelly Hamilton theorem. If A is non singular square matrix of order n and phi lambda equal to determinant of a minus lambda equal to a0 a1 lambda a2 lambda square dot 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 a n lambda to the power n is the characteristic polynomial of a, then phi 0, let us put lambda equal to 0, phi 0 equal to a minus 0 i, this is 0, 0 i. 0 i means 0 into i when you multiply unit matrix by 0 all elements will be 0 so it will be null matrix capital O so a minus capital O is again a so it is be just determinant of a equal to n naught here lambda 0 so n naught so constant term in this characteristic polynomial actually give the determinant of a now a is non-singular determinant of a is not 0 so this n naught is also not 0 then by Kelly Milton theorem we, we get this the square matrix capital S satisfies its characteristic equation so lambda replaced by a and n0 by n0 into capital I now let us multiply rather post multiply we have by a inverse so i into a inverse n0 i into a inverse a1 a into a inverse plus a2 a s square we have written a a a inverse multiplied a q we have written a square a a inverse etc a to the power n we have written a to the power n minus on a a a inverse will be i and everywhere we have replaced hmm, a, a inverse by i and i into capital a a into capital i is a, a square into capital i is also a so what we have got just side change and divide by a naught we have got a inverse equal to 1 minus 1 by a naught into this so this is the inverse of capital a by kelly-hamilton theorem means we need not calculate adjoint cofactor etc just square cube etc calculated and a inverse is obtained so another way of finding inverse now let us see example verify kelly milton theorem for the following matrices and hence find inverse of the matrix if it exists so three matrices given let us see number one first capital a be the given let capital a be the given matrix then characteristic equation of a is determinant of a minus lambda equal to zero so a minus lambda means just diagonal from diagonal we have subtracted lambda three minus lambda two lambda minus lambda minus two minus lambda and then we have expanded it as usual and we have got this equation rather changing the sign we get lambda cube minus 3 lambda square minus 7 lambda plus 7 lambda plus 18 equal to 0 which is the characteristic equation of a now to verify what then replace lambda by a a cube minus 3 a square minus 7 a plus 18 into i remember 18 into i it should be written so that we can add this it becomes a matrix again o equal to o means null matrix so a square we find first a into a so multiplying these two matrices by this rule all of you know first matrix we move towards row second matrix towards column so 3 into 3 9 minus 1 into 0 means 0 4 into 1 4 so with same process we have multiplied and we have got this matrix this is a square again we have calculated a cube means a into a square you can write or a square into a we have written a into a square so again a into a square we have multiplied by this rule 
first of first column 3 into uh, 13 39 minus 1 into 1 minus 1 4 into 1 4 etc similarly all elements calculated we have got a cube now a cube minus 3 a square minus 7 a plus 89 so a cube will be substituted 3 a square a square we have calculated and multiplied by 3 directly values we have substituted here and then minus 7a a is already there multiplied a by 7 and 89 means diagonally there will be only 18 and now usual addition and subtraction of matrices all of you know corresponding elements are added or corresponding elements are subtracted as the case may be so we have got all zeros so this is now matrix capital o therefore a cube minus 3 square minus 7a <coughs> sorry plus 18a equal to o that is kelly melton theorem is verified now we want to find inverse multiply by a inverse from the right so o into a inverse will be o and here a cube will become a square a square will become at um, a a into a inverse will become i i into a inverse is a inverse so 18 a inverse is minus a square plus i say plus 7 i now minus a square a square will be substituted a will be substituted i will be substituted and then we have Simplified, added, multiplied, added, etc., and got this. And then this is 18 a inverse, therefore a inverse will be 1 by 18 into this matrix. So 18 taken inside. Okay, calculation you will check. So this is the inverse using Kelly-Hamilton theorem. Rather after verifying Kelly-Hamilton theorem. And number two is easier. Uh, two by two matrix. Custard equation of A is determinant of a minus lambda equal to zero. So one minus lambda, one minus lambda, other elements remaining same for A equal to 0 expanding we have got lambda square minus 2 lambda plus 5 equal to 0 and to verify a square minus 2a plus 5 by 5 is split by 5 by equal to o now matrix so this is 2 by 2 matrix easier so a square means a into a written below of a below of i substituted and simple multiplication and then addition subtraction we have seen all elements 0 means capital o therefore a square minus 2a plus 5 by equal to o so kelly milton theorem is verified now to find inverse we have multiplied post multiplied by a inverse this equality and got a square will be a square into a inverse will be a a into a inverse will be i i into a inverse will be a inverse equal to o into a inverse is o so a inverse will be your side change 2i minus a and 1 by 5 so 2i is this a already there subtract and then divide by 5 we have got so for today we stop here thank you more problems we shall do in the next uh, lecture next class. Thank you.